I've been feeling into what to do about a particular situation with a couple of friends who there's been a, a, a separation, a breakdown, and how much do I do to resolve the situation? And my soul brought me to the place of not needing to be vindicated. Like, I'm fine, right? I'm safe. I'm fine. However they want to act, they've shown me their colors. Great. I can let go and I can uh, rearrange my boundaries. But now I'm starting to see how it's not just affecting me. It's starting to permeate the community. And I'm asking my soul, what do I do? And I was reminded of this period of time when I was living in Nicaragua and I went on a hike with a couple of friends to this lighthouse and we went off track or off trail to go look at this old gunnery and as we're going back on trail, this guy comes out of the woods dressed in all black with a mask and a big ass machete, probably the biggest one I've seen. And my friends just start throwing their money at him. And I had just heard this story a couple weeks ago that if you get loud and start screaming, they're really afraid of being embarrassed. And if you start saying things like, fail, fail, calling them ugly, um, they get really embarrassed and they'll walk away. So I have this in the back of my mind and I'm also thinking there's three of us and one of them. Yeah, let's see. So they hand their money over, he asked for mine. And I, I said, no, I'm not giving you my money. And he kept pressing, kept pressing. And finally I thought, you know what? It's $30. Who cares? It's $30. So I gave him my $30. And then he's like, I want your purse too. And ain't that like the motherfucking darkness? Isn't that like a parasitic, vampiric, spiritual lead where they say, oh, I just want this much. Just give me this much. Just this little bit over here. It's not that big of a deal. But they're never satisfied with just a, a little bit, right? They need a larger supply. So the guy wanted my purse. And I had just had my uh, wallet stolen, not my wallet, my, my phone stolen the week prior and I just bought a new phone and it was in my purse and I was like, no, I'm not giving it to you. So then the guy's like, I'm gonna kill you. Mind you, he's saying all this in Spanish and I'm doing my best in Spanish as well. And I was like, you're not gonna kill me. And at the same time, all this stuff started flashing through my mind. And if you haven't met me, my soul's a little bit gangster. <laughs> My soul's a little bit gangster. So I start thinking, you know what? There's three of us and one of him. Nature's here. I got two hands. I got this heavy ass water bottle. And all of a sudden I'm like, man, I will pick up two fistfuls of dirt, throw it in your face and ambush you. That's where my mind went. Okay. So I called up all my energy. I got as big as I could in my five foot three body, took my water bottle that was metal, but it was filled with water. So it's heavy. And I lifted it up and I unleashed the crazy. I unleashed the primal feminine. I said, bring it motherfucker. I will fucking kill you. Ah! Like the warrior came out and my friend stood there like, and the guy, the robber puts his machete down and he's like, pasa. And that, that is the power. Here is this man dressed in all black, hiding who he is, coming in here like he's all powerful with his machete, and yet he cowers to a five foot three woman who stands in her power. So the moral of my story was step in Kelly, step in more. Because while you are safe and you can handle yourself and you don't need them and this isn't a popularity contest and you're gonna be fine, just fine. What's happening is now the dis-ease is going into the community. The dis-ease is going to affect more than just you and more than these other humans that are involved in, the, in, in this behavior. It's affecting the community. And sometimes I feel like as spiritual people, we're so worried about being nice and being liked that we lose touch with this primal aspect of us that is here to protect life. And that's what my soul was reminding me of in that story. It's like, yes, Kelly, be nice, but don't be so fucking nice that you're a doormat and you allow disease to permeate in this community. And I feel like that is a struggle for a lot of humans on the spiritual journey is we equate emotions and strong reactions with the shadow, with things that are dangerous. And 
these types of behaviors are not always dangerous. There is a time and place for it when it is preserving life, when it, the sanctity and the sacredness of life, there is a time and place for that. And we're in this world right now where there is so much fuckery happening and a lot of the spiritual community is still too fucking nice to call it out because they're worried about their numbers and their stats and their paycheck. And yet here we are folks with a dying world because we haven't been calling the disease out like it needs to be called out. We're not here to be liked. We are here to love humanity into wholeness. And sometimes that means calling up that fierce warrior and saying, no, this is not happening on my watch. I will protect and preserve love and life, period. Right? Because the alternative sometimes is being too fucking nice that death reigns and that is not happening on my watch anymore. I love you.